the really important thing about cybersecurity is that we need to be able to protect information um, as well as being able to maintain access to that information. So the way that we want to live and work relies heavily on our ability to access information whenever we want it, wherever we want it, but also to protect it and make it stay safe. If organisations don't take cybersecurity seriously, there's, there's two real consequences. One is to their own organisation around uh, financial consequence, reputational damage and so on. The second area is really one at the national level. Uh, according to the Australian Cyber Security Centre, in FY21, cybercrime cost the Australian economy $33 billion in that year alone. Uh, so it looms as one of the great national security and economic challenges. It's really impossible to look at the news without seeing some sort of cybersecurity threat. And um, the main thing organisations should focus on in protecting their business and customers is um, accepting it's a reality. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and cyber, uh, you know, cyber attacks will happen. They, we've seen that. Um, they've been very high profile here in Australia. Um, and the last Australian Cybersecurity Centre report calculated that, if, um, that there would be an attack every eight minutes. So, um, and that's based only on those that get reported. So, you know, we hear these stats so often, but we almost become immune to them. And most organisations have relatively strong data protection and detection um, capabilities in place already. But that's not enough. 76% um, of Australian respondents um, in our breakthrough research acknowledge that given the ever-evolving nature of work, their organisation is even more exposed to cyber attacks now. And many organisations are not certain um, what they'll do to recover if an attacker gets the, um, through their perimeter and encrypts or wipes their data. Artificial intelligence can be very successfully leveraged for cybersecurity, and I, I think we, we've seen lots of examples in our project where that has been successfully deployed in terms of automation technology, but it also presents a risk. Mm -hmm. So if AI is not trustworthy, and if cybersecurity criminals, or, or criminals use artificial intelligence against us, that becomes an equally large problem. Interesting enough, we rank 26th globally on the use of data and um, analytics and AI. And we're moderately, moderately um, low spending on cybersecurity, despite being the third most targeted country on ransomware. Emerging technologies are another focus that we have. What quantum technology then can lead to is that some of the security mechanisms we have deployed today becoming broken. And that is only a matter of time for that to arrive. So we're looking forward to how we transition out of how we secure systems today towards a future where this new technology enables faster processing, faster computation that makes us insecure. We've got to get to a situation which zero trust is, is how we address it. It's built on the premise that no user or task is trusted. Every interaction should be verified before proceeding. And so, you know, that applies now across, as, as IT is so pervasive in, in um, business, in the, you know, everyday um, citizen. We need to really be thinking and applying that across everything we do, across the infrastructure, the software, the microservices, the network. And, and it's really um, going to be critical to reducing that overall risk that exists. Never before has it been so important to collaborate. You know, the, the, the bad actors out there are very good at collaborating and the centre is here to help ensure those that want to thwart those negative actors in our ecosystem are best prepared and collaborate to achieve that cyber resilient community we all want. I think it's absolutely essential that, that in an area like cyber security we all work together and trying to imagine how a future is going to look like and take appropriate steps to, to make Australia more secure. In academia we, we have really forward-looking research of, of really outstanding quality in Australia that is looking into a future 10-20 years how we operate, how we live in our cities, mm. how cities become smart, how transport systems become smart. Mm. And you can see that level of automation reaching in, in mining. Now, that is so futuristic, it is sometimes not directly applicable. However, it informs the long-term strategy setting of, of businesses, mm. as well as governments, who have a responsibility to be on the front foot to regulate these kind of mm. technologies so that they do not cause harm to Australians. 
there is a great relationship and it's been already been established between the Australian Cyber Security Centre, the Australian Signals Directorate and industry, starting off with critical infrastructure and the systems of national significance and the new legislation and framework around that. But that needs to cascade through the economy down to SMEs. So I think the big missing piece is to make sure there's resilience and cyber awareness amongst our SME community. Digital skills is a huge shortage. It's been around for a decade or longer um, and it's been exacerbated through COVID and coming out of COVID through the borders being shut and global demand for job skills, we, for digital skills. We, we know that over the, between now and 2030, there'll be 30 million shortfall of jobs globally for digital skills. So the challenge is a global one, not just an Australian one. We need to do a lot more. We actually did some breakthrough research and we surveyed uh, 10,500 respondents globally. And according to Australia and New Zealand respondents, 52% believe that employees are wrestling with burnout or poor mental health that's impacting productivity. So you're talking there about the workforce that is. And then, um, you know, they're also indicating through that research that 74% believe that organisations underestimate the key role of people when organisations are going to transform and adopt these new and emerging technologies. So, you know, we need to make sure it's not only it's about skills development, it's not only about attracting people to the industry, it's about making sure that our collective commitment to employee well-being has a real impact. The issue is that many of the operational skills are really difficult to learn out of school or out of university. Mm. And I think the, the other problem that you see is diversity, the lack of diversity in the cybersecurity sector. Yeah. So if you're looking at, at tapping into more women that are operating in cybersecurity or, or more neurodiverse settings as well, that is becoming increasingly important because these skills are, are really augmenting and tapping into this wider pool of, of expertise mm. is really important for cyber security. Mm. And I think other countries are slightly ahead of Australia okay. on that journey. We're working with the government right now on digital apprenticeships and work integrated learning. There's lots of really great examples from AAA members out there. We need to move beyond the trials and the pilots and roll out a national scheme. But we have to think also about how we're getting the next generation excited about tech. We need to look at the background of today's tech leaders and come, you know, the reality is when you look across the tech industry, these um, leaders and, and, you know, senior professionals come from a variety of disciplines. You know, there's, there's a lot, yes, with computer science degrees, but there's also economics, history, uh, philosophy degrees. You know, I have a Bachelor of Science um, in zoology and, you know, we all ended up working in the industry. And why was that? Because, you know, it was an exciting industry to be part of. Um, you know, the possibilities are endless. And you can see the direct impact that our industry has on the outcomes of business and society, which is, is incredibly exciting to be a part of. So given that the threats are so great, do you sleep well at night? Look, I do. I mean, the tech industry is leading the charge when it comes to cybersecurity and pr providing those controls and resilience across the economy. The opportunity and the challenge is to make sure that all those other organisations across the economy use the tools that are available and bring in that cultural change and organisational change.